In the relatively small galaxy of CID 947, which is 22 billion light years from Earth, a gargantuan black hole with an abnormally large mass was discovered that is capable of capturing an enormous number of stars along with their solar systems. This paradox has led researchers to question all of the modern theories about the life cycle of galaxies. Of course, questions arose. How big must a hole be to destroy an entire galaxy? How could it have come to exist? What exactly is happening to the galaxy at this moment? And can the supermassive hole eventually even swallow it entirely? But first things first. Currently, it is believed that there are only three types of black holes, starting from the smallest to the largest. In front of us is the first view, the primordial or relic black holes. These are the smallest black holes whose formation took place in the early stages of the development of the universe. It is thought that clusters of matter, which appeared due to irregularities of the Big Bang, could collapse into the state of black holes while the rest of the matter expanded. A black hole is not always something that is very large and heavy. Researchers suspect that the size of some primordial black holes may be significantly smaller than the size of a proton. The second view. These are stellar mass black holes. They originate in the aftermath of the life cycle of massive stars. Make note that the black holes are formed only from stars with a mass that exceeds the mass of the Sun by 20 to 40 times. Another alternative for the formation of a stellar mass black hole is gas accretion. Accretion is the accumulation of matter from the surrounding space into a cosmic body. Gas falls into a neutron star until the mass of the latter exceeds the maximum possible mass for neutron stars. In such an instance, the neutron star will collapse into a low-mass black hole. And finally, the third type, supermassive black holes. It is assumed that these objects are located in the centers of galaxies. Their mass can be up to 10 to 9th power the mass of the Sun. Among them is a massive hole in the center of the Milky Way with a weight of 4 million solar masses. It is believed to have formed from a giant gas cloud that compressed into dark matter or, alternatively, is part of the first generation of heavy stars that collapsed into primordial black holes and then merged into one supermassive black hole. There also exists a hypothesis according to which supermassive black holes are located in the center of quasars. The understudied and most distant of those cosmic objects that can be observed from the Earth. Quasars are galactic nuclei and have a black hole in their center. Quasars are incredibly luminous and small in size and they can be observed at a distance of 10 billion light years. These objects emit a tremendous amount of energy in all of the regions of the electromagnetic spectrum and especially in the infrared region. It is precisely this type of massive black hole that interests us. However, as a rule, a commonly accepted theory of the formation of black holes of this sort of mass, similar to that in the center of galaxy CAD 947, does not yet exist. Galaxy CID 947 is a most ordinary galaxy. The total mass of its stars is just 45 billion times greater than that of our Sun. For comparison, this figure for the Milky Way, which is considered a fairly small spiral galaxy, is 64 billion solar masses. But at the same time, the mass of the supermassive black hole at its center turned out to be inordinately large. According to the calculations, its mass exceeds that of the Sun by almost 7 billion times which makes this object one of the largest black holes in the early universe and makes it the leader in the weight category of galaxies of this size. 
This sort of a finding completely contradicts the well-established theories about the growth of black holes in the centers of galaxies, which postulate that the stellar megapolises and the heavyweights living in their centers grow approximately the same rate, and that their masses always maintain the same ratio of 1 to 500. In the case of CID 947, the black hole is only eight times lighter than the entire galaxy. This means that it was growing much faster than the rest of the stellar megapolis, literally eating up almost all of the gas that fell into CID 947 from the intergalactic environment, which was relatively rich and dense compared to today. There is yet another oddity, CID 947, has already reached the limits of its growth, but new stars continue to be born in the surrounding galaxy. Until now, this was also considered impossible, since the radiation of the black hole and the gas flows surrounding it, in theory, should prevent the birth of new stars. It turns out to be a strange paradox, since a black hole both devours stars and facilitates their birth. A finding like this not only contradicts the theories of the growth of galaxies, but also provides evidence that the supermassive black holes didn't always act as a suppressor of the star formation process as they are considered today. All of this indicates that the current understanding of the life cycle of the early universe needs a radical revision.